Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and if it's the first time you are passing through, welcome. Share, like, subscribe, whatever takes your fancy. Um, today, it would be remiss of me not to talk about Boris Johnson getting in the get succeeding in the role of Prime Minister. Um, I'm not a politician. But I do have my views about certain things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, they don't know how he got in. The same way they said they didn't know how Trump was going to get in. And they're saying he hasn't got any plans and he's bumbling through. And the thing is, is that you cannot underestimate. Uh, the thing is, how can I put this? Boris Johnson could not have got where he is if he was stupid and if he was a bumbling fool. So the first thing we have to get clear is that this is an intelligent man and a rich man. He's now prime minister. He's rich. And the thing is, is that he has been endorsed by Trump, Donald Trump, and the two of them are very like minded. That I don't know if they agree on everything, but they agree on a lot of things. And the thing is, uh, one of the things that a lot of people do not know about the leaving the EU without a deal is to benefit the rich. The thing is with the EU, it's put out a lot of legislations to protect the citizens and civilians. That is what it does. It protects us. It protects our human rights. It protects fraud. It protects abuse of taxes. And they've come out, the EU have come out with new legislation that it's going to make it so much more difficult to funnel money out of the country into countries where there's low tax. So there's a, all the loopholes are going to be shut off. And so the rich people are not going to be able to shift their money like they have been shifting it. And that is the main reason why they need to leave the EU. No other reason. Forget about the trade deals. We know that's going to cause chaos. But the main reason is to benefit the rich. No other reason. So people can talk on the news until the cows come home. We can, and when they, they, when those rich people in Parliament says, "Oh no, there's not going to be poverty, there's not going to be any problems," no, it won't be for them. It will be for eighty percent of the population, though. People like you and people like me are going to ex experience recession and poverty. You can call it fake news. You can call it Project Fear. We have to. I mean. By now, we should know. I mean, any if any of us have got a, any common sense, we know that leaving the EU is not in our favour. We also know, given the experience of politicians, that what they do is in their favour. So, you know, it speaks for itself. So when they're talking about no deal, no deal, I'm not quite sure. I think Theresa May was probably trying legitimately to get a deal that would benefit, but I don't know. All I know is that they're throwing, selling us down the river. And that's not just black people, love. That is white people as well. In fact, it's the poor it's the working class and it's the middle class. We're all being sold down the river. Once post-Brexit comes, we are in trouble. So, but you don't have to believe a little simpleton like me. I mean, who am I? You have all these academics on TV. You have all these economic e economists and you have all the everybody on TV who seem qualified to talk about the subject and who probably are qualified to talk about the subject. But sometimes it takes the little people to see the big picture. And it's little people like us who need to wake up and see what's really happening. You know, the media, we cannot always trust the media. 
the media is also in the hands of the wealthy. They're also going to benefit. And it's in their interest to make us feel as though this EU is, is in our favour. The first thing that's going to go up for grabs, we know that, is NHS. Boris, Gard well, Boris Gardner, Boris Johnson has already said that it's going to be, well, more or less, in more or less words, it's going to be a universal health care. Farage threw it in that we're going to be insurance, insurance, um, it's going to be based on insurance, just like America. And, you know, the NHS is going to be now sold off, well, American um, private people, doctors will be taking over the NHS and a lot of people will be suffering as a result. You know, in America, 45,000 people a year die because they cannot access, they cannot afford to access NHS, and not NHS, the health service in America. They can't afford it. And when you lose your job and you haven't got, because normally if you have a decent job, like if you work for the government in America, they actually subsidize your insurance. So you get Blue Shield, I think it is. And I forget, yeah, I think it was Blue Cross Blue Shield, but I can't remember categorically. I forget which one I had, but that would be like the premium insurance. And that's why the rich don't care because the rich will be able to afford insurance pre premiums. The poor people won't. Those people who lose their jobs, and I know they have the equivalent of the A&E, but the A&E in the UK is, doesn't look any different from the person with money to the person who doesn't have money. Everybody's treated the same under that, whether you're paying for it or you're not paying for it. But the thing is, is that in America, they actually have, is actually have certain welfare hospitals, as I understand it. I don't know if it's changed, but as I understand it, they do. And then you're, the rich can go to the best. They go to private hospitals because that is what the premiums pay for. So I don't know what's going to happen, folks. It doesn't look good at all. I mean, you know, we can't worry about it because Boris is in there. And for Trump to endorse him, it means the two of them are like-minded. And I believe they are. When you listen to them um, describe Boris Johnson, it's almost like they're describing Trump, to be honest. And Trump has already said you've got a Trump now in the UK, Trump representative in the UK. So we can see a similar scenario taking place, similar plans for the future of us and whatever's happening. The thing that I'm worried about is the NHS because it is our biggest asset and that will be put on the table. Um, Trump let it slip a couple of months ago when he came over here and he was talking to um, Theresa May, he let it slip that it's on the table for a trade deal, and it is. They're also trying to, um, the price control. They also want us to lift price control because America's lifted price control. And what price control does is a very deceptive way of making things look better than what they are based on the way that they word it or based on the way that they actually put it out there to the public. So we're at their mercy. And so those are my personal thoughts. And I'm just going to read a couple of things to substantiate what I'm saying. And yeah. Um, yeah, so 80% will be poorer. That's some of the projections that they're giving. Um, leaving the EU will put up trade barriers. The sole reason for leaving the EU is because of the strict new EU legislation that closes tax loopholes for the rich. When we leave the EU, there will be no requirement for the rich to abide by strict financial regulations. Leaving the EU is all about benefiting the rich because they will have no financial accountability. You see, when people have money, they can't see anything beyond that. That is their power. And they don't want anybody touching it. They don't want anybody telling them what to do with their money. So they are going to become a bit like Singapore, you know, where they do whatever they want 
to kind of keep money under wraps. And that's what it's all about. It's got nothing to do with immigration or immigrants and all that stuff that they've been, you know, putting in our faces to get it through. It's got nothing to do with that. And I'm sure each day somebody is going to see that it's not about immigration. Immigration is just a small part of it because immigration takes money out of the system. The money that they would prefer to use on themselves or keep for themselves. So when you're thinking about immigration people using the health service, I mean, they don't because, like I said, foreign nationals have to pay for it. But there's still people here who they know that they can cut the costs if they can whittle it down to the bare minimum. And that is what they propose to do. There'll soon be a time when whether you have an income, whatever your income is, you're going to have to pay for your prescriptions and they're going to be very expensive. To see a doctor is going to be very expensive. And so you're going to be forced like those in America. Apparently there was one woman, um, she fell between the train and the platform and her leg was severely lacerated and heavily, heavy bleeding. And she said, please don't call an ambulance because an ambulance can cost you anywhere between 200 and 2000 pounds in America. So she didn't want one. And that's what's happened to people. They can't afford to use health care. And that's what it's going to be like for many of us in the UK. We're not going to be able to afford UK, I mean, health care. Of course, there'll be situations where there's an emergency. And I would think that I hope that would be free, but maybe not, because when I was in a car accident in America, it wasn't my fault. I was a passenger. But the first thing they said is, what are your insurance details? Blood gushing, gushing out of my knee. What are your insurance details? All this paperwork before they'd even look at me. Fortunately, I was able to go on to my cousin's um, health, health insurance and, you know, they saw to me. But had I not been with my cousin and I'd been in that situation, I probably wouldn't even be walking now. So that is the reality of what we have to look forward to. But yeah, I've gone off again, haven't I? Um, let's read this. Um, if we stayed in the EU, it would make it difficult to move tax to low cost countries. And that's what this is about, folks. Anti-abuse rules covers national tax loopholes. So goodbye to NHS. Hello to universal healthcare. Boris and Trump, two like-minded people. Since Trump came to the UK, we knew that once Boris got in, our health care would be moving to an insurance-based system. And we know that's what's going to happen. We know that's what's in the works. They've been talking about it for a while, giving us a kind of, and people are saying it can't happen, it can't happen. It depends who's in government. It can happen. I don't know what they'll do with our NHS insurance premiums. I don't know where that would be diverted to, but it can happen. They're already trying to make the NHS look inefficient. They've cut down um, the recruitment. We've got no recruitment. And what's ironic is that the reason a lot of people voted for Brexit was to boost the NHS. And it's done exactly the opposite. It's caused recruitment freeze we're well, not a recruitment freeze but you know there's not you know the people don't want the jobs the people who are in the uk and all the foreign nationals and um the people from the eu because they're so scared about their insecurity and their instability they've left the country leaving leaving a big gap in the employment for nhs so um, healthcare is a business. While it seems free when we walk into a hospital, I don't know if you know this, but when you walk into a hospital um, and it's not your hospital, like you've gone out of the area, that hospital has to bill the hospital in the area that you originally, where, where, where you live basically. So it's all about billing. And you notice now the doctors, they don't even look at you anymore. Very, very very, very rare. They actually actually have much eye contact. Their faces are on the screen. They're writing up their little bits because it's all about billing. 
no personal care, no personal contact. Unless you're fortunate to have a nice doctor or you might have a private doctor, then it might be different. But for the majority of us, we go in, they tell us we've got three minutes or I think it's either three or five minutes. You can only talk about one symptom at a time at my doctor. And that's it. Types up something. Oh, is that all you need? Okay, then types it up. Do you need a prescription? Yeah, okay. You know, looks at all the um, contradictions sometimes and make sure that it doesn't um, contradict with anything you're taking. And then Bob's your uncle. You get the receipt, you go to the, you go to the chemist, you pick up your prescription and you're out of there in five or six minutes. The waiting time to get in there might be a bit long, but apart from that, I mean, for me, I have to get to the doctor about quarter to eight. It opens at 8.30, the actual gate. If you're not there at quarter to eight and you don't sit on the floor and wait for, um, and wait for that gate to open, it's unlikely you're going to get an appointment because the appointments, they're only giving appointments on the day and on that morning, they only have a certain amount of appointments. And if you're further down on the list, you're going to have to come back the next day. And that's how it is. There's no more appointments. So they're already making the NHS uncomfortable for a lot of us and making us feel as though it's useful and useless. And then with the introduction of Alexa, add that into the equation where you won't need the NHS. You'll be speaking to this machine to give you all your, um, your medication advice. You know, they're setting us up for it already. We're already being conditioned for this. Um, UK was ranked the highest in the world for healthcare, while the UK, USA was ranked the lowest. So I don't know why we're following their model. Um, the money comes from our taxes, so where that will that be diverted to? I've already said that. Now Boris is in. He's going to align our NHS healthcare with the American model. America has substandard hospitals for the poor and vulnerable. It costs 200 to 2000 to use an ambulance. I think I've said all of this, but I'm just, I've written down notes, so I just want to make sure I've covered everything. Um, universal healthcare, less taxes for the rich, so they cannot fund the NHS. Yeah, that's another thing Boris Johnson was saying, is going to, um, the ticks, the rich are going to pay less tax. And the tax is what they use to fund the NHS, so if they're going to pay less taxes, it's going to affect the funding of the NHS. These people are not silly. I think you under, a lot of people underestimate them. And when you hear these reporters talking to them and saying, oh, but if you do this and oh, this, what's this going to mean? And is there going to be any austerity? And are we going to be poor? Are we going to be worse off? I mean, it's such silly questions to ask. Such silly questions to ask. Um... Universal healthcare covers more services, more people for the same money. So that's the direction I think we're going in, based on the little snippets I hear, because I never listen to the whole conversation. There's something that always jumps out at me, and that's what I latch on to. And that's how I do my videos. I do my videos based on maybe a word or a sentence that somebody says or I've read, and then I'll just go ahead with it and do my little research and look up certain things and you put my own opinion on it. I mean, like I said, what I'm talking about is not fact, it's just my opinion about certain things. And you can do your own research. There's plenty out there, plenty of experts, and they can tell you to something totally different from me. Um, so 200 billion per year has been spent on unnecessary procedures, apparently. Um, and a lot of doctors have apparently performed procedures for personal profit. And, you know, there are doctors who will not see um, an NHS patient because they've got a private patient waiting for them. So that NHS patient will suffer um, waiting. In America, it has been said that 19 million illegally imported medication, 19 million illegally import medication to save money. 
So when you think about medication, it's expensive. They don't want to waste it on the poor. Um, and I heard Trump was saying, you know, um, he's not going to, because he's campaigning, of course, he's not going to stop health care. He said, but he wants to make sure that it's not subject to fraud. And he wants to make sure that it's not abused. And I kind of think to myself, you know, <clears throat> what is his definition of abuse or fraud? How is that going to be managed? Because when you are that high up financially and you haven't, you, how do you, how can you see what's on the ground? You can't. You're going to have a, 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 a thwarted perception of the needs of the poor and the vulnerable. And, you know, people, I mean, look how the other day, the disabled people, they were 1,300, 13,000 were refunded DWP disability payments because the machines had got it wrong. And what I'm saying is that there's a perception by a lot of people, especially people who are well off, that the little people are trying to get something. And the thing is, they've got so much, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't think that they care. Why do they care? If, you know, if the little people need to benefit from something that they've worked for, why would they want to take that away? But it's almost like, you know, some people say when you have a lot, it's never enough. And some people like that. No matter how much they have, they want more. And if it means taking away from the poor to get a little bit more, a lot of them will do it. Anyway, lack of health insurance is a result of 45,000 deaths a year in the USA. Trump has recently currently is currently saying he will not stop Medicare, but he will stop reckless use of it. I don't know what his definition is of reckless use. And that is a problem. Are they going to, you know, say that, OK, if your arm isn't dropping off, you don't need to go to the hospital? I don't know how they're going to work that one out. Because a lot of illnesses, they're not visible. So how do you... How do you work that out? How do you manage it? illnesses and sicknesses that are not visible, that have no visible signs? Um, yeah, I don't think I've got anything else to say, to be honest. Um, let me just have a look at this last piece. Oh, yeah, Trump wants the UK to remove price control post-Brexit. Price controls are government-mandated legal minimum or maximum prices set for specific goods. They're usually implemented as a means of direct economic intervention to manage the affordability of certain goods. And apparently, I don't know how true this is, but price control is to be a part of the trade deal post-Brexit along with the NHS. The EU had a common agricultural policy, in brackets CAP, which aimed to increase the income of farmers by setting minimum prices. That's a part of this price control thing. It's one of, it can work to an advantage, but it can also work to a disadvantage, depending on how you use it. Generally, price controls distort the workings of the market and lead to an oversupply or shortage, which is evidenced by Trump's claim about the economy. They can exacerbate problems rather than solve them. Nevertheless, there may be occasions when price controls can help, for example, with highly volatile agricultural prices. A better solution to maximum prices may be to increase the supply of housing, but the UK is heading towards eliminating price control to align with America. A better solution to minimum prices may be to offer subsidies to farmers who promote some environmental benefit to society rather than through prices. So my friends and my subscribers, don't know what you think about this maybe you think it's a load of twaddle but it's just my opinion like i said take care for now bye bye